Hey everybody, today on the Rotter Runs Through channel, we're playing Clank Catacombs. But before we get going, please turn on your subtitles to the Klingon channel for any rules goofs. And here we are, friends. We are in the catacombs of the skeletal dragon Umbrock Vesna. And our job, shall, if you decide to take it, and we have, <laughs> is to find your fortune and escape uh, with the loot before the dragon uh, burns us all to a crispy crisp. Uh, we're going to be doing this in a two-player game. Uh, Michelle is going to be the red player. I'll be the yellow player. And we're going to be doing this with the standard classic deck building mechanisms. So we each start with a, a deck of uh, 10 cards. And we're going to be playing these in order to move and to uh, do some combat and eventually, hopefully, uh, find that artifact and get the heck out of dodge. So I'm going to go first. So I'm going to draw five cards like any uh, other deck builders. And you'll notice the cards have uh, different um, uh, icons in them. Let's take a close to look real quick for example this scramble card um, that i've drawn is has one skill which is going to be the currency that you're going to use to purchase other cards from the dungeon row it also has a boot for movement so that's how you're going to move around the catacombs and so i've actually drawn my scramble and my sidestep so i've got two boots so we each start with the crypt in the crypt so i'll be yellow i'm going to move this empty room so that's one movement. And then I'm going to use the other movement to go into the Crystal Cave. Now, what the Crystal Cave uh, means is once you're in there, it's, you know, you get sort of lost in there, a little, you know, not really know where your whereabouts are in there. So you have to stop. Anytime you go to Crystal Cave, no matter how much movement you have, you can stop. You must stop. Okay, so now we also have a stumble. So, you know, you're in the, you're in the catacombs and you're making noise. That's not a good thing. So you're going to add one clank. So I take one of my clanks. <clears throat> I'm the yellow. Michelle's the red. Now I do have this sideboard uh, here uh, off to the side because, I mean, this there's a lot of room that I need here for the table. So I'm going to take my clank, put it here. Uh, we had started with three for me, the first player, two for Michelle. And you'll notice here the dragon. That's how many um, cubes the dragon's going to pull during the dragon attacks. We'll talk about that later. This is our health meter. If at any time um, we reach the end of it, which is 10, uh, we are knocked out. And that's not a good thing. So very early in the game, though. So I have uh, moved my uh, twice. I've done my clank. Uh, added clank I've made some noise now I have three skill the skill can be used on any of the cards in the dungeon row you also have these ongoing ones here uh, that you can always purchase um, so I've got three I'm looking at the ones here you can purchase more than one uh, but it, it doesn't fill up till the end of the round so let's see I can do this one here this one here I always like a good companion you know whenever you know Whenever I'm in a dungeon, folks, I like to have companions because it's not as scary. So I'm going to take the bard. So let's take a closer look at the bard. Uh, the bard is uh, costs uh, three um, skill to add to your deck. And then it gives you two skill anytime you play it. And anytime you play it, you also have to add a clank. And But if you make more than two, two or more clank, you're going to heal twice. So that's going to come in handy, I think, you know, because there are a lot of baddies in this uh, catacomb. So I'm going to add the bard. Uh, that is the end of my turn. And then we reveal the next card in the dungeon row. And it's a smash and grab. So that's the end of my turn. Now we're going to go to Michelle. Uh, let's shuffle her, her deck up real quick. And one, two, three, four, five. You'll notice too, if you've ever played the original Clank, it's a lot different, folks. We don't have a board, we have tiles, right? So in true dungeon crawl fashion, we don't know what's coming up next. So we're gonna be drawing these as we move there. Uh, you'll see that real quick here. Let's get Michelle going though first. She's got a scramble, she got a bunch of burgles. So Michelle's been burgling around, so she's gotta move one, she's gonna move the empty room. But now look at all the skill she has. I've always said Michelle is way skilled, way more skilled than I am. So she gets five skills. She can buy five things. Uh, Michelle's looking here. Um, she likes this one here, Pillage. So the Pillage card can, what it can do is if you gain at least three money this turn, draw a card. Okay, so, and, but it does give her a boot and two swords. The swords are going to come in handy um, as we continue. So that's three. Uh, cost her, or it actually cost her two. So she has three left over to spend. This one gets her to draw cards, but it's going to give her two clank. Um, hmm. Drawing cards is always a good thing, I, I personally think. I wonder what Michelle would do. Michelle says, you know what, Ruel, I like the way you think. We're going to go with the smash and grab. Okay, so that's the end of her turn. Now we refill there. We've got a swindle coming up. And we have a sudden movement. Now, some of these cards, when these, uh, they have special th um, abilities that uh, trigger right off the bat. So it's in sudden movement, we have... 
arrive. So when this card arrives in the dungeon row, it says each player alone on a square tile must rotate that tile to a new orientation. Oh, that's interesting. So we're actually in the very the first tile. So don't we don't have to worry because we're on the same tile and it's not a square tile. These are the square tiles here. So we have not gotten that. So that's sort of lucky fortunate that we didn't uh, have to uh, deal with that yet. Okay, so back to my turn. I'm going to draw the rest of my deck, which is five. So I've stumbled, you know, I'm a little clumsy. That's going to add a clank. And then I have one, two, three, four burgles. So now I can spend four. Um, you know what? I'm going to buy that sudden movement because it's going to give me one skill per turn I draw it, every turn I draw it. And it also gives me two movement. So that's three. And then, hey, look at this Rebel Scribe. Um, the Rebel Scribe is cool because it's a companion. And it says, if you have another companion in your play area, draw a card. And if you remember, I got the, I you know brought up the Bard to join my party. So hopefully I can draw both those at the same time, which will give me extra cards. Okay, so let's continue now. And uh-oh, Boots of the Eight Lords showed up and also Shadow Walk. So we'll talk about those uh, in a bit. But the important thing to note is the Boots of the Eight Lords have shown up and there's the Dragon. So we are going to have to do an attack. The Dragon, here's, the, the, you know, hearing some of that, you know, clanking around, it's like, uh-oh, stirring up. So we get the Dragon Bag here. And what we're going to do is add all the clank. All the noise that we've been making is gonna go into that bag and we're gonna draw. So if you draw your you know, color out of here, you are gonna be uh, hit for damage. Now, before we started, there was, uh, we did add 20 uh, black cubes in here. Those are the dragon cubes, those are just safe. If the dragon you know, pulls that, it's just all smoke, no fire, so we're okay. So right now, this for a two player game, we started here, so it's gonna be three. And there's ways that when we get an artifact, we're gonna bump it up. Uh, to the next level and all the way up to the final level, which is five, which you do not want to be doing. Okay, so we're drawing three right now. You just reach in the bag and draw three. One, two, three. And, oh, it's two black ones, so that just goes to the bank. And then, unfortunately, it's a red one. So Michelle has taken a hit. Sorry, Michelle. She's got one, but plenty of plenty of room here. It's just, a, just a flesh wound, folks. All right, so now that's the end of my turn. Um, then it's Michelle. She's got her final five cards. Uh, so she's going to use her sidestep to move into the crystal cave with me. And she has to stay there. Um, she does have two clank to add. So she's going to take two of her red cubes, place them there. And uh, one, two, three. Uh, oh, uh, just two uh, skill this time. So Michelle's got two skill. She looks at this remove traps, replace a card in the... Ooh, okay. She can do that and it gives her two swords. So she's getting ready to do some, do some battle. Okay, so she's taking that. And then we go here. And it's an animated wall. It says, arrive. Rotate each square tile with any players on it 180 degrees. Okay, so again, we're not there yet. It would have rotated the tiles 180 degrees. But thankfully, we aren't there yet. So now it's back to me. I'm going to shuffle my deck. And again, I have started to build my deck. I'm adding new characters and new items and whatnot. So we're, you're going to see the uh, deck transform as we play here. So five. And okay. So now I've got... Again, don't worry about the arrive when you pull again. That's just when it arrives on the dungeon row. After that, once it's in your part of your adventuring party, your deck, you're good to go. You don't have to. You can just ignore that. But I do have two movement now. When you're here, I'm gonna. I can either go here or here. I'm gonna choose. I'll go. I'll go up here. Now, what you're gonna do is I've got a movement, but I cannot just you know move into the void. Ah! I have to draw a tile from the top and then. I have to place the tile. And this is what's really exciting about this version of the game. Um, this, you can start building your own table um, board here. And now it does have to connect with, you know, one of your um, uh, movement uh, arrows here. But you, and, and you cannot do something like this. It has to be flushed to side to side. But you're going to decide, do I want to go here, here, or here? So this is interesting. This is an interesting choice. I'm going to get greedy. I'm going to go here. So I've got two movement, folks. I'm going to go here. Now, the monster, just like in the base game, you have, to, you, you, should, you have to have a sword in order to avoid damage. You have to battle it with your sword. But I did not draw any swords, okay? So I'm going to take a damage. Boo, ooh, ooh. So here's the board again. I'm going to take a damage. So I've taken one early in the game. So again, it's just a flesh wound. So I'm going to take my one movement here. Now, I've uncovered a minor secret. So I'm just going to go, uh, again, another difference from the base game, uh, the original base game. You don't see them on the board. You're going to draw from the pile. I'm just going to draw this one here, reveal it, and, oh, it is a box of secrets. So, not a box of secrets, a 
puzzle box. <laughs> so the puzzle box, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold on to that. And then when I find a, a Wayfarer um, spot, I'm going to uh, exchange it for a major secret. We'll talk about that in a second um, once I uh, find that. So that is not um, not uh, applicable yet. So I do have one more movement. I could go here and in a crystal cave and then I can heal or I can go across here to this empty room. Now you'll notice here this arrow, that means if I go here, I cannot go this way. I'm gonna have to go this way. So you know what? Even though it's early in the game, I like to heal. So I'm gonna go here and then all that's automatic one heal. So I just take this cube and add it back to my supply. All right, yeah, nice, nice little uh, Band-Aid right there in the middle of the uh, dungeon. <laughs> okay, so I've done my sudden movement. Um, my bard says plus one clank, so I have to add a clank. And then, oh, hey, I've got a stumble. That's a second clank. And the bard says, uh, if you make two more clank, heal two hearts. But I'm already at full strength, so this doesn't come into play. I hopefully will be using that later. Now, I could have gone this way and just ignore them. But, but you know what? I'm there. I'm, I've made my decision. I'm living with it. So I've got two, three, four, five um, skill. So what am I going to do? Now it is time to purchase. So I am going to look here. I've added my planks. I've got one, two, three, four, five to spend. I really want the boots of the eight boards. That's going to give me a lot of movement. Okay. So, but I am going to add a bunch of clanks. So I'm playing with fire. Now this does say that if I grab a monkey idol, I don't have to stop in crystal caves on that turn. So that's sort of cool. Um, if I can get the monkey idol, the monkey idols are here. You can see that we start at the crypt right here. We cannot actually move. From the crypt over here we're gonna have to find a way to loop around and get those monkey idols okay so that's the end of my turn we refill the dungeon row and uh-oh a darkened alcove, alcove has shown up and it is a dragon attack so we're still at three um pull cubes pulled but i do have some yellows that i'm going to drop in the bag we have to pull three hopefully they're all black or you know maybe a red for michelle but i'm going to draw three one two three and is two black, those are safe, those go back to the bank, but one for me, so now I've got one health, uh, one damage. Okay, uh, now to Michelle, she's going to draw her five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, she's here, I'm there, let's see what she does. Ooh, she's got some movement and she's got some swords. So Michelle, she can go here and battle that and get a, another a minor secret like me. Or what she's going to do, she looks at that, she's like, you know, well, I'm going to go this way. She uses one boot to go there. And then she's going to go down here. So that means, I'm going to move this up here. She's going to draw another tile. And, ooh, okay, she could put it here and go into a minor secret room. Go here or go to the empty room. Here or here. Okay, this is interesting. Maybe if she does this. Now, these here, that means you need two boots to move out of that. But if she does this, okay, either one's going to be... Okay, either one is going to go to uh, this room here, which she wants to do. Okay, so she's used one boot. She's going to use her second boot to go here. Now, she would normally take a damage there, but look at that. She has her pillage. That means she has a sword that's going to battle off that. So she takes no damage. All right, Aiden Michelle. So she's gone there. She's got done her two movements. She's out of movement. She does have one sword left, but there's, let me see. She could fight the key master, but you need two swords to, to defeat the key master. And there's also our friendly neighborhood goblin. You can always defeat the goblin. Um, that's always going to be there. It's sort of like an ongoing goblin. Uh, you can defeat that for with two swords, uh, but you don't discard it. It's just going to stay in that top row, and you do get a coin. Now, coins are worth uh, points at the end, along with any artifacts and anything else that you collect that are points. Uh, you'll also notice that, um, for instance, in my deck, I've got uh, the Boots of the Ape Lords. Uh, you can sort of, it's sort of see-through because of the green screen, but I'm, I would get three points at the end of the game um, because that's what's on the card. Those little ribbons are victory points. Okay, so to Michelle now, uh, she's here. She has done her movement. She's used her Sorty Sword uh, and says here, if she gains at least three coins this turn, she can draw a card, but I don't think she's going to do that. But, oh, what, but wait, Michelle's got the uh, Smash and Grab, which I'll throw here. Plus two clank, but she gets to draw two cards. Look at that. So plus two clank. She's added this to the clank, but she gets to draw two cards. So she may not be done, folks. Actually, she is. Okay, so she's got a bunch of burgles. Uh, that's four burgles, a scramble. So she's got a total of six skill to spend this turn. Or as Michelle likes to call it, she likes to say she's going shopping. So she's got six skill. Um, there are a couple of things here. Ooh, this is a good one. So the shadow walk, 
Uh, this will allow Michelle, whenever she plays this, she can trash a Burgle in her play area or discard pile. So that's going to help thin out her deck and get rid of those uh, Burgles that really don't do much. So that she's going to buy for two. She's got four skill left to spend. Uh, oh, look at this. The uh is it divining rod divining rod i you know i don't know how to pronounce that folks i'm sorry i need to go to the uh, clank catacombs uh dictionary and figure out how to uh say that uh excuse the green screen it does say if i generate or uh, michelle generates six or more skill on a turn she will heal so that's a good one she'll put that in her deck as well and that's the end of her turn this is her discard pile now we refill the dungeon row uh we've got an animated wall Ooh. Okay, so Arrival, again, we had had one earlier, but didn't affect us. This time it does. Rotate each square tile with any players on it 180 degrees. So the ongoing living catacombs here, we're going to rotate 180 degrees. So Michelle goes like that. And then, hey, I'm on one too, so I'm going to go like this and like that. And just like that, the dungeon has changed. It's a living catacombs, folks. The uh, dragon Umbrock Vesna doesn't mess around. So that, look at that. That is, oh, that's so different now. Interesting. Now, Michelle's turn isn't over. You'll notice here that she is on a space with pris a prisoner or a jail cell. So she's going to unlock it. Now, you'll notice that, did you see these three things that we each started the game with? I, if you did, good eye. But if you didn't, these are lock picks. And this is going to help us go through any locks here. Now, we couldn't go through here because the arrow, we have to only go that way. But it'll also unlock... Um, jail cells uh, or prisons, libraries, and chests, like a treasure chest. This, in this case, Michelle is going to, oh, this is mine, actually. She's not using mine. She's going to use hers. Uh, she's going to use her lockpick to unlock the uh, prison here, and she's going to draw two of these tiles here, two of the prison tiles, and she has um, rescued two prisoners. And what you do is uh, flip those over and, <clears throat> excuse me, so you're going to flip these over and see what prisoners you unlock or, you know, let or set free. So you have the prince here. So at the end of the game, you're going to uh, get five victory points. And then, um, you know, there's this really handy guide here, the token reference guide that comes with the game. So I'm looking here. It's the golden monkey bot. This counts as a monkey auto for all purposes, though it is worth three points at the end of the game instead of five. So I just got a monkey idol, or Michelle did, without even having to go uh, find the monkey idol. She's got one there. So these two prisoners are going to be hers. She's going to score these at the end of the game. Put them there. And she has two lockpicks left. I still have my three. And that is the end of Michelle's turn. Good turn, Michelle. So let's draw my turn. Well, one, two, three, four, five. And, whoops, let's see what I got. I've got a bunch of Burgles and a Rebel Scribe. Now, if I had another companion, I would be able to draw a card. But I do not. I just have a bunch of um, Burgles. So I've drawn... Oh, you know what? I jumped ahead. I didn't even refill the uh, dungeon row here. So we had... Um, what did we have? We had that one come in. And then the... Arch Overlord, uh, the Arc Overlord. Ooh, okay. Uh, yet again, another card with the Arrive. Uh, uh, um, Arrive says, oh, uh, the Arrive ability or the uh, trigger. All players get plus one clank. Okay, so the Arc Arch Overlord says, y'all are being too noisy. Add some clank into the clank area, which is over there off screen. Now it is my turn. I'm going to draw my five. So uh, as we saw earlier, it's five skill. Um, so I can grab, let me see, this one for three. Ooh, that would be nice. I'd get three gold coins every turn. Or I could also purchase this device. Now, the devices are interesting. Uh, on the device, or for the devices that show up in the dungeon row, you will still pay the uh, skill value down here, which is two. I would pay two. And then I use it, um, when I use it, I would subtract, uh, do that ability. So in this case, I would lose two clank, which is nice. If there's a bunch of clank, I don't want those going in the bag. It's from this area here, not the actual bag. So I have one here. So it makes no sense for me to use that because I'm just, you know, wait until at least I have one there. Um, and then the device actually does not go in your deck. You just use it and lose it. It just gets discarded from the game. So I, let me see, what did I do? I did five, so I've got five to spend. I do like that swindle. And uh, yeah, I could probably use a mercenary. I need some swords. I don't have enough swords in my little adventuring crew. So I'm going to do swindle for three and then mercenary for two. So I have some swords. So I need to start protecting myself. Okay, so let's see what fills the dungeon row. It is astral projection, so nothing happens. I'll go back to Michelle. She's going to draw her next five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And she has a burgle, a couple of stumbles for clanks, and then a sidestep. 
So let's see. Let's take care of the um, stumbles first. So two clank for Michelle. She's a, she's a noisy one, folks. She's making a lot of noise in this dungeon or this these catacombs, and the dragon might wake up soon. Uh, the sidestep. So Michelle can sidestep, uh, move one movement. So she could go. Oh no, she cannot go up here because she needs two movement now. She could go left or she could go straight down here. Um, you know, she'll go straight down. Now she is going to take a hit because she does not have swords this time. So over here, back on the uh, health tracker, we're going to take, uh, actually not from there, not from the clank, so from her supply, two, or one there, and now she's at two um, health damage, but she does get to reveal ne the next tile. Okay, ooh, so she, she can go there for a coin, or she can go here to mark it, that's always a good thing. She can go here to Crystal Cave, that doesn't really do anything. She could take another damage to get a migrant secret. She's already taken one damage this turn, so she's going to play it safe. Go like this. So she's gone to the market. Now the market that is up here. This, we haven't shown you this um, space yet. Uh, the market, just like in normal or uh, the original clank, you're gonna have a couple of items you can uh, purchase here. Uh, these are all cost seven uh, gold. So neither of us have gold yet. Remember, I do have that swindle card, so I'm gonna be start racking racking up the gold. So I can go to the market when I have seven and purchase an item. Uh, you have uh, just straight up victory points, the crown. So if I, the first one's ten. The second one is nine, and so forth. Uh, the this one here is worth two victory points at the end. It's the little uh, locks uh, lock pick. Um, uh, what is it like a little set of lock picks? So you turn that you get this, you automatically get two lock picks. Okay, uh, and then this is the blood amulet. Now this one's interesting. You can only purchase this if you have five damage. So if you're really hurting. You purchase this, you get seven points at the end of the game, which is nice, but you also immediately heal two health. So that's going to be good later in the game. And finally, you have the backpack. That gives you five victory points at the end. But most importantly, what it does is allows you to take two artifacts. So once you have one artifact, that's it. You know, the, these things are big and heavy. You can only carry one out, out of the catacombs. But if you have that backpack, you can um, collect two. So that's really cool. All right. So Michelle has, let me see. She's one. Doo, 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 doo. Has she done her turn? She went to the market. Yeah, she is finished. And she does have two skill to spend. Uh, oh, you know what? She is going to use this. So she is going to use this, this device. She spends her two skill to use the darkened alcove. And she gets rid of two clanks. So that just comes off the board on the side and goes back to her supply. And this gets discarded out of the game, and that's her end of her turn. Now we refill the dungeon row. And uh-oh, the imp familiar, it is a dungeon, a dragon attack. So let's get the bag here, and as you'll see, now Michelle just got rid of two clanks, so that's a pretty good thing. She would have had a lot more. But now we take all these, drop them in the bag, drop them like it's hot, uh, Snoop would say, and uh, we draw three, because that's what level we're on right now. These are got a pretty good mix here. Let's see what happens. One of each. So that goes back to the bank. Michelle gets a damage. I get a damage. So Michelle's at three. I'm at two now. So got to be careful, folks. Okay, back to my turn. I am at the end of my deck here. So I've got a shuffle. Do, 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 do. And let's see. I'm going to draw five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see what I got. I got burgles, burgles, burgles. And a companion. Okay, plus one clank. So take one, put it there. And unfortunately, I didn't make another clank. If I would have, I would have healed two. That would have been perfect. But I've got four, five, six skill to spend. Uh, let's get, um, let's see, take, ooh. Okay, I can take a lock pick. No, I've got enough, enough lock picks. I need movement. So um, I've got six to spend. I'm going to take this astral projection because it's worth two. It says, if I generate, let me uh, put it on the screen here. If I generate six or more skill of this turn, mark a way shrine. Oh, way shrine. That's what they're called. I think I might have called a wayfarer earlier. Uh, mark a way shrine as though you were there. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm sure, I mean, hopefully one will show up and I'll be able, if not, I'll just I'll pull it from the uh, stack there and show you. But anyways, I purchased that for three. I get three more. I'm going to take an explore. So I have some movement. Okay. That's the end of my turn. We refill this. Another dragon attack. Oh my gosh. So the skeletal ape, um, the, there's the dragon. So we take... The clank cube that I just added, one of mine, and we go here, we're jarring three. Okay. So once you take a artifact, we haven't gotten there yet, but when the artifact is uh, comes up, that's when you move the dragon attack up, folks. Okay, drawn three. Ah, two of the dragons and one for me. So now Michelle and I both have three damage. So got to be careful, friends. 
Okay, so that's my turn. Now it is Michelle's. She draws, um, let me see, what is this? Was this mine? Oh no, I just got mixed up. This was Michelle's. This might have been mine. Let me see, did I, let me see, side steps. Um, why is this here? Yeah, you know what, I think this might have been mine from my earlier deck. Like this should have been up here, which I just bought. This is my deck here. Oh no, so there's one that Michelle's playing. Let me see, did she have, let me see if she has stumbles in here. She does, okay, yeah, this was mine. Okay, so that should have been there. Okay, uh, so Michelle's played this. Now I'm gonna shuffle her deck. Gotta play five, unless you have the cards that say draw more. So two, so that was one, two, three, four, five. And oh, okay, Michelle's got all kinds of stuff going on here. Okay, so. All right, she's got five. She got three movement. She can go one here, and she's got swords now, folks. So yeah, you know what she's gonna do? She's gonna take one movement to go here. She's gonna take one sword to take care of that monster. Go here. She takes a minor secret. And hey, two gold coins. So again, these are worth two points at the end of the game, and or you can spend them at the market here, um, which is up here. So we're gonna add that to her loot. Uh, she still has two movement and three swords, so she's going to take another movement to go this way, which means draw a tile. And hey, okay, look at this. She can get another minor secret here, or she can go this way and get to that treasure chest. Yeah, okay, that looks like the move to do. Okay, so Michelle is going to go one more movement, so she's done one, two. She has a third movement because of her sidestep, going to go to the crystal cave. Now, in the crystal cave... You'll notice there's a chest here, the treasure chest. Michelle has yet another lockpick. She's going to use that. Just place it right there. Okay, she is going to unlock a major secret. So the major secrets are taken from the chest. So she just draws one here. Okay, so this major secret is a catacombs map. This is cool. So the catacombs map... Basically, what that allows Michelle to do is travel in any direction she wants. So these arrows, uh, this here, it says you can only go this way. Now, for Michelle, she doesn't need that. She has the map, folks. So she can go any which way she wants. So good for Michelle. Okay, so let's see. Now, she does have this shadow walk. She can trash a burgle in her player area, area or discard pile. She's going to trash this burgle. So boom, bye, burgle. Um, and then this remove traps says she can replace a card in the dungeon row. Uh, and then... What's cool is if if the new card has a dragon attack symbol, ignore it. So she can just uh, replace one of these dungeon row cards, and even if there's a dragon, no worries. Okay, so you know what? She's going to do that. Uh, she's going to get rid of, um, let's see, we'll get rid of the animated wall and replace it. And hey, there was a dragon there, but no worries because um, she had the uh, remove traps thing. So now what Michelle does is uh, she's done with her turn. She has to end because the movement ends there in Crystal Cave. Uh, but she does have one, two, three, three swords left. She, remember, she spent one here. Excuse me. She's going to... Oh, yeah. She's going to defeat the Skeletal Ape. Now, by defeating the Skeletal Ape, it took her three swords to do that, which she had. And by defeating it, she's going to get three coins, three skill, and three clank. So she's going to give up the clank, but she's going to get money... Okay, uh, so three, we got one, two, three. Okay. And then she gets three skill, but she does add three clanks. So she's going to take three clanks. She's got a lot of clank in there. She's making a lot of noise, but she is getting a lot of cool stuff. That goes in the clank. Now, according to her pillage card, if she uh, gained at least three coins this turn, she gets to draw cards. So her turn may not be over, but it's a burgle. Okay, so let's look at the skill. She has one here on this burgle. She has one here on the remove traps, and then she gets three more because of the skeletal ape. So Michelle has a total of five skill. She's so close, she could have gotten that. So if she would have had seven, look at this. If she would have had seven, she would have bought the Thirst for Adventure, which is worth three boots. And then any card that has a choir, you immediately get that. So she would have gotten three boots. Now, because she was in the Crystal Cave, it's actually okay that she can't afford it. Because the Crystal Cave, would not you would not be able to move because you're done. However, you can always move out of Crystal Cave if you have a Teleport, which is another uh, type of card. But Michelle's got five skill to spend. Uh, you know what? She's going to take this one, the Imp Familiar. 
Uh, this gives her, when she plays it, when it comes back around, take a lockpick or spend a lockpick to draw two cards. So if you'll notice, she's already spent two lockpicks, so she probably wants some more. So that's two. She has five to spend. She can use uh, buy three more. You know what? Yet another explorer. Let's get all that movement. All right. So that's the end of Michelle's turn. Very good turn for Michelle. And it's going to go back to me soon. Let's refill the dungeon row. Oh, arrive. Sudden movement. Each player alone on a square tile must rotate that tile to a new orientation. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to rotate mine. Or actually, this is Michelle. So she's going to go first. Uh, let's do this. She'll rotate like, let me see. She was this way. Um, eh, well, we'll go like this. Okay. And then me, I'm here. So I can only go this way to the right. And I have to, ooh, man, if I do it like this, I'm going, I'm like sort of going around and around in a circle here. I have not had much movement this game, folks. So I'm going to go this way. Let, let's try to go around here. We'll see what happens. Okay, so um, as we noted, I sort of screwed up my deck there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reshuffle these to make it fair. And then one, two, three, four, five. Leave my deck here. And then, okay, now I've got a ton of movement, a bunch of swords. I've got a sidestep, a scramble. I do have a stumble. So I'm going to stumble once. I'll stumble for you. Is that a... No, that was uh, no. It was I'll tumble for you. <laughs> a little culture club for you folks from back in the eighties. You know, but in, in Clank, we'll call it I'll stumble for you. Okay, so I've got one Clank I added. I've got three, four boots. So I'm gonna. These boots are made for walking, folks. And yes, I will continue to reference uh, out of date songs. So I'm gonna go here. I can go here. I can open up. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, let, let's let's do this. Let's. Uh, okay, first I'm gonna go this way. That's one boot. So I'm gonna put that there just to remind myself. And then I'm going to go off here. Now, you'll notice these are different colors now. If you, I don't know if you noticed um, earlier, but these are these um, tiles that are above the depths. The, so if you can get back here at the end of the game, you're safe. You do want to get to the crypt because if you get to the crypt, you get 20 extra bonus points. That's like getting out of the original game. But now we are in the depths. So these are going to be much more interesting. Oh, okay. How, what am I going to... Oh, man. What am I going to do? I'm going to go here. I, I can use a lock pick. And then that'll help me get to prisoners. I can go here, or I can go here. That is a port. There's a portal there. Ooh, that would be sweet. Um, first things first. There's a ghost. That's one of the new things, folks. Boo! Uh, this ghost here. What that does? You take a ghost cube, the white cubes, place them in the clank. Now, it is part of the clank uh, section here. When we do a dragon attack, we take all these cubes, put it in the bag. If you draw that white cube out of the uh, bag, everyone's scared. Everybody takes one hit of damage, not just the, you know, the uh, color like yellow or red. Everyone takes damage. So that is the Haunted Tiles. That's yet another new thing of this um, for this game. Um, shoot. I want to get a minor. You know what? I really want to save prisoners. You know, I, I'm, that, that's how I roll. I, I'm a goodie. So uh, I've got a movement. So I'm going to go here, use my lock pick, unlock that. And then let's go over here, grab two prisoners and see who they are. All right, so we got one here and then uh, one here. And I'm going to uh, go to that handy dandy chart. The token reference has all the prisoners here. So we have uh, this guy, this looking guy, this big looking guy here. Um, let's see. He is the warrior. Worth one point at the end of the game for each prisoner you have freed, including the warrior himself. Okay, cool. And then we have this one here. It looks like a, oh, it's a discount coupon. You may use this token one time while buying an item from the market to pay five less gold. Ooh, it is not a prisoner for any purpose, uh, like with a warrior, we just say. Keep it until we use it, and then return it to the box. Oh, so that's great. All I need is two gold, and I can buy something. Oh, I love the discount coupon. Okay, so I'm going to place that this stuff here. Uh, so I'm not done. Okay, so I needed another lockpick. to. So I've used two of my lockpicks to open that up. Now, I do have uh, some more movements. So I've done one, two... And I had four. So let's go three, get a minor secret. Again, just grab it here. And hey, it's a trash a card. So again, this is from the original uh, game. They have the magic spring. At the end of this turn, trash a card from your discard pile or play area, then return uh, this token of to the box. So I'll do that at the end, just remind myself here. I do have another movement, but check this out. Now I do have this portal. I can go here for a movement and then portal over to any other portal. So that's really cool. Unfor oh, wait a second. I can go from here to here. Oh, that yeah, you know what? We're doing it. So I have one movement. I take the one movement there, 
And then including that movement is a portal over here. So now from here, I do need another movement to go through here. I do not, let me see, I did one, two, three. I do have a final movement, right? Uh, where did I start? I started one, two, three, no, four was that. Okay, so I'm done there. Okay, oh, that would have been perfect because I have a couple of swords. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now I've got one, two, three skill to use. Uh, this doesn't give me anything. I have three skill to use. I have two swords. So for the two swords, I'm going to defeat the key master. Bye-bye, key master. That's what you get for being in my, my space. Uh, take a lockpick. So I've defeated him with my two swords. Um, let's see. Did I use any swords here? I did not. Okay. Two, so I get a lockpick. And then for three skill, I'm going to get this another set of movement. That gives me two boots. Yeah. Love the movement, folks. All right. That's the end of my turn. Good turn. So I am I went from here, thanks to that portal, all the way over there. All right, let's move on uh, to filling up the dungeon row. Sneak attack. Brave hero. And a black market. Okay. So, again, that's a device. You spend that and you use it immediately and discard it. Uh, let's go to Michelle's turn. One, two, three, four, five. And she's got a couple of stumbles. I stumble for you. I stumble. So she's got to add two planks for the stumbles. And then she also has, to, she's smashing and grabbing. She has to add another two. But wow, Michelle is making a ton of noise, but she gets to draw two more cards for that smash and grab. And she got a bunch of burgles, but let's see, how many did she, she generate one, two, three, four, five. Unfortunately, she shorts, uh, she needed to generate six in order to heal with her, uh, the rod there. Did she? No, she did not. Okay, so she's got five, five to spend. Um, ooh, this brave hero. This is a good one to have because the Brave Hero, it's worth two skill. It also has a sword and a boot. Then it's worth five victory points if you free three or more prisoners at the end of the game. So Michelle has already freed two. I think she's going to have to take the Brave Hero and continue down that path. Okay. So she didn't move this turn, but we do have to fill up the dungeon row. It's a bandit. All right. Uh, back to me. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. And I've got, ooh, I've got some boots. I've got the boots of the Ape Lords. Oh, I don't have any swords, though. Darn it. I really wanted some swords because I don't want to take damage here. But here's the thing, friends. I'm going to, um, ooh, okay. So the boots of the Ape Lords is interesting because if I have the Monkey Idol, which I'm going to have at the end of this turn, I don't have to stop in Crystal Caves this turn. So from now on, you know, I'm going to get those. So for, let's, let's let's slow down here, Ruel. Let's go here. So I've portaled over from the previous turn. I'm going to take one movement to go to the Monkey Idols. I do take a damage. Let's take the damage, place it on here. I now I have four damage. But I'm going to take a Monkey Idol. These are worth five points at the end of the game. But it's going to help me when this card draw uh, is drawn, then I'm going to be able to move. I don't have to stop in Crystal Caves. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now I do have... Um. Oh, boy. Yeah. Where am I? Uh, I'm going to go this way for another movement to go to the market. Now, did I did I forget to give myself some money? I could have sworn I had that uh, card they give me coins, the swindle. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't draw that yet. Oh, wait, it's right here. I just drew it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I get three uh, coins. One, two, three. And... With that, friends, I can use my discount coupon. The discount coupon allows me to buy something at the market. I am in the market. I can get it a discount minus five. I can spend two coins to get one of these items. I am going to get, um, let's see, lock pick. No, I got enough locks. I, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get points. I'm gonna go for ten big points at the end of the game. All right, cool. And then I've got three. Uh, skill to spend. Um, oh, the sneak attack is cool because I've got three swords and I lose. I can take off clank. So uh, that's that's what I need. I've been generating too much clank. Just same with Michelle. Okay, so shadow walk. Another one where you can trash a burgle. Uh, I've got one change there. I've got that, that, that. Oh, you know what? I forgot to trash a card. So that sh I should have trashed a burgle from the previous round. I'll do that now. And that goes away. And it is back to Michelle. Yeah, wait. How many uh, movement did I have? One, two, three. The boots of the Ape Lord. So it's one, two. I can I can do a third one. So I'm gonna go here. Ooh, yeah, we're doing this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Can I? 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So, oh, this is interesting. So the first artifact has shown up. So when this shows up, you do take the artifacts. Now, these are in a stack here, friends. And the artifacts go from 5 all the way up to 20. So the further you go in the catacombs, the, uh, the bigger the points go. So this one's going to be 5. And that's the decision you have to make. Do you take that one that's fairly low in points but and try to get you back as quick as possible? Or do you go further in the catacombs to try to get the ones that are worth more points? Oh, that's a great decision. Also, you'll see, notice, the uh, Way Shrine has shown up. And the Way Shrine, what that does is when I go here, I'll take one of my cubes from my Clank Supply. I place it there, I get a gold coin. Now what this does, you can uh, you can do one per Way Shrine. There's going to be more Way Shrines in the deck here. As those come pop up, you can place another one. And now that you have two, like one here and one there, you're going to get two gold. So as you go further along, you're going to get more gold on those. Oh, that's great. Okay. So as you can see, we've already found our first artifact. We can start, you know, making a decision. Do I want to continue here and, or, you know, do I want to go further in the catacombs or do I want to get this five uh, pointer and get the heck out of Dodge? Uh, that, I think, is a great overview, a good way of taking a look at all the new stuff here uh, in the uh, Clank Catacombs game. Um, and for my final thoughts, please click. For my final thoughts, please click on the eye in the top right corner or the show notes below or hang on for five, four, three, two, one.